Well, hello there. Hey, today we're going to talk about Lesson 9. Now, Lesson 9 is not um, really new to you guys. It's something that we kind of need to review a little bit so that you're sure that you know what you're doing as we go on in the book. The topics for Lesson 9 include adding, subtracting, and multiplying fractions. And we're going to talk about reciprocals and the inverse property of multiplication, which is totally related to reciprocals. To start with, we're just going to spend a little time talking about adding fractions. Now, when we're adding fractions with the same denominator, we simply add the numerators and write the sum over the original denominator. So, you're looking at a numerator is on top, the denominator is on the bottom. So, if you're adding this denominator, if it's the same on both fractions, you're just going to add the numerators together and put it over that denominator and then reduce if you have to. Here's a couple of examples. 4 sevenths plus 2 sevenths equals, denominators are the same, 4 plus 2 over the original denominator, which is 6 over 7. We don't need to reduce that because it's in its lowest form. Here's another example. 2 fifths plus 4 fifths, denominators are the same, so the denominator stays to 5, 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 over 5 is an improper fraction, so we do have to reduce it by taking 5 into 6. It goes one time with 1 left over, and of course you put that over 5. Even if you're dealing with percents, even if you're dealing with percents that have fractions, you can still use the same rule, okay? So we have 22 and 1 fourth percent, and we have 12 and 1 fourth percent. Now, we know we can add the 22 and the 12 together because they're whole numbers. But then we also have to add this 1 fourth and 1 fourth. So that's what we do. We go over here and I separated them out so we could see them a little better. And we end up with 22 plus 12, which is 34. And 1 plus 1 over the 4 is 2 over 4. And of course, you can reduce that 2 over 4 to 1 half. And remember, if you're working with percents, you've got to add that percent sign. I think that's pretty clear. I don't think that's too too much of a stretch for you guys. Okay, so now we're now going to go to subtracting fractions, which is really very similar to adding fractions, except just the opposite operation. And we're only going to talk about same denominators today. So to subtract fractions with the same denominators, we simply subtract the numerators and write the difference. Difference goes with subtraction. Write the difference over the original denominator and reduce if necessary. So, some examples as usual. 7 over 9 minus 5 over 9 ends up to be 7 minus 5 all over that original denominator, 9, and then it's to be 2 ninths. No reducing necessary. Okay, now, this one works pretty well, and the reason it works really well is because this numerator is larger than this one. If it wasn't and we had borrowing involved, we'd have to do this a whole different way. But in this case, we don't have to. So we can take 3 minus 1, those are whole numbers, and then 4 minus 2 over 7. Like I said, if this had been smaller than that number, then we would have had to borrow from our 3 and rewrite it. And that, that's a little more complicated. So we end up with 2 and 4 minus 2 over 7, 2 sevenths. On this example, it's kind of fun, and I, I just wanted to do it just to remind you that it can happen. Uh, 4 over 11 minus 4 over 11 is 4 minus 4 all over 11, which is 0 over 11, which is 0. And you can do that. That's a legitimate problem. Okay? As long as you have 0 on the top, we don't want any zeros on the bottom. Because we get zeros on the bottom, and that becomes undefined. We can't work with a problem that's undefined. Okay, let's talk about multiplying fractions. Again, not difficult, something you've been exposed to before. Uh, when we're multiplying fractions, we don't worry about the denominators being the same. And to multiply fractions, we simply multiply straight across, meaning we multiply the numerators times the numerators and the denominators times the denominators quite often we have to reduce afterwards. That isn't unusual, especially in multiplication, to have to reduce. Okay, here's a good example. 
1 third times 2 thirds. So in this case, the denominators were the same. 1 times 2 over 3 times 3. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 3 is 9. Remember, this is multiplication. We multiply. We don't keep the 3 as a denominator. Now we have another one. Same denominators again. 1 times 4 over 5 times 5 ends up to be 4 over 25. Okay, now, I want to remind everybody that there's a word in math ease. I call it math ease because math language, the word of. The word of means to multiply. Uh, in a lot of uh, word problems that you guys are going to see, you're going to see uh, uh, what is half of 12. Well, that really means 1 half times 12. The of means times. In a lot of math problems, you're going to see the word of used, and it indicates that you're going to multiply. So 2 thirds of 3 fourths means 2 thirds times 3 fourths. And so then 2 times 3 over 3 times 4, 6 over 12, which can be reduced to 1 half. And lastly, you know, we don't have to just multiply two fractions. We can multiply 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 20. We don't really want to multiply that many, but we can. And again, we just go straight across. 1 times 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 4 is 8 times 3 is 24. No. Actually, you know, I'm wrong here because I can reduce this. This can be reduced to 1 over 8. So there's our answer. It can be reduced. I didn't reduce that. Everybody understand why I reduced it? Because 3 goes into 3 once and 3 goes into 24 8 times. Okay? All right. Now we want to talk a little bit about reciprocals, and then we'll talk about the uh, the property that goes along with them. So reciprocals. We form the reciprocal of a number and or a fraction simply by inverting or flipping it. When we do this, the numerator becomes the denominator, and the denominator becomes the numerator. Okay. Here's some examples. You want to put these in your notes because it'll just kind of help you remember. Okay, the reciprocal of, I'm going to put the number here, is over here. So, the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 thirds. We just flipped it. The reciprocal of 6 sevenths is 7 sixths. The reciprocal of 1 eighth is 8 over 1. The reciprocal of 13 over 1 is 1 over 13. Okay? Another little note that you might not know, or maybe you do know. The product of a number and its reciprocal will always, always, always be 1. Always. So, 1 eighth times 8 over 1 equals 8 over 8, which is 1. 6 sevenths times 7 over 6 equals 42 over 42, which is 1. 13, and I guess I could put it over 1. Any whole number can be put over 1, remember? 13 over 1 times 1 over 13 equals 13 over 13, which equals 1. 13 over 20 equals 13 over 20 times 20 over 13 equals 260 over 260, which is still 1. Okay? So that's important that you realize that, that, that you can take a number in its reciprocal, and that plays a part when we're, uh, when we're working on solving equations. We use that all the time. You just don't realize it probably. Okay, now, what helps us to use a reciprocal, what gives us the permission, is this inverse property of multiplication. And this property is the proof that any number multiplied by its reciprocal is equal to 1, but it has have one special condition. And that's probably the only reason that I brought this up, otherwise I wouldn't have worried too much about it. It's one special condition is this, okay? You can take a times 1 over a, which is reciprocal, and get 1. If and only if a is not 0. Okay? So if a were 0, then you would get an undefined because you cannot have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. So if a were 0, folks, here's your example. If a equaled 0, then you'd have 0 times 1 over 0. And the answer to that is un, undefined. Okay? You can't, you can't do that. You can't 
have a zero in the denominator because what you'd end up with it would be zero over zero and this part right there is the undefined part can't have it I've never seen a zeroth in my life and I never 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 never, never hope to okay and then we use the inverse property to find numbers as I said earlier we use it for um, we use it for equations three-fourths times what number is going to give us one? Oh, yeah okay four over three seven-eighths times what number gives us one? Oh, yeah that's right eight over seven three times what gives us one? Oh, one over three now you're going to get this question and I don't care how many years I teach this particular class on this book this question always comes up and so I want to go over it because I always get a lot of questions about it okay so here we go and it's the last page of my notes future homeworks you will have this question how many two sevens are in one hmm the question you really are asking is what can I multiply two sevens by to get one that's what they're asking what can I multiply two sevens by to get one I'm telling you, put this in your notes, circle it, square it, I don't care what you do with it, but mark it because I will run in, you guys are going to run into this question several times, even on a test. The answer is, yeah, seven halves, just what we've been working with. What number times two sevens equals one? Seven halves. Okay, and this is because two sevens times seven over two equal fourteen over fourteen, which is one. Let's just do a few examples. How many three-fourths are in one? Yeah, four-thirds three-fourths. How many one-elevenths are there in one? The answer is 11, or you could write 11 over one if you want to. Okay, how many nine-twelfths are in one? Well, there are 12 ninths. Okay, and of course I have the answers down at the bottom, but we answered these questions. Now, this is, seems like a pretty easy lesson, but I just hope you spend the time to get the notes well because this is something that we don't go back to very often, but that you're expected to learn and you're expected to know no matter what. So, have a great day and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.